Uh, hey, everyone. Welcome to a new episode of Around the Mic on hey. Sojo 104.9. I'm Heather DeLuca, uh, joined by Mike Richmond and Social Spring Gonzalez of The Mike Show. What are you looking at? What are you, what are you, talking, are you about? talking to? Nothing. What are you talking it's about, Willis? <laughs> <laughs> For a second, I thought maybe you saw a ghost. Or something weird like that, because I know Heather wasn't looking at you, no. and I wasn't looking at you. But should, now I understand. Should we try to make Sorry more eye contact? Just no. To, oh my God, eye contact. Less is eye contact. So uncomfortable. Okay, well, that's a good place to start. Why is eye contact so uncomfortable for spring? It's too intimate. It's too much. Like sometimes I'll do it to make other people uncomfortable. Spring. I'm. I'm not. I'm not trying to like to take you to bed. No, I just am I having know. a conversation with you. I know, but I. It's still too intense for me like i feel like you're looking to the windows of my soul i always wonder how the boxers you have a soul <laughs> i always wonder how the good point <laughs> when you know the boxers face off they have the way in and the boxers right. they get right up nose yeah. to nose and they're staring at each other in the eyes you know how do they just not crack up laughing right you know, that's what i can't I get do. that close to someone because it's the to... eye of the tiger no i would I you're would staring start down laughing. your your greatest friend and where exactly do you look because you never Stay looking straight ahead. Like, do you start looking at their eyebrow? Do you start looking at random things near their eye? No, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. You have nice eyelashes, so I like look at your eyelashes. I like your eyelashes. You know what drives me nuts is when people go left eye right eye, left eye right eye, yes, left eye right eye. that's what I'm talking about. And they don't think that you can see them doing that. You can you totally can see totally doing say that. It's so weird. <laughs> stop. Don't please stop. I don't like being looked at. But I will admit. That to make people uncomfortable, I will look them in the eye and see how long it takes for them to break the stare. Just to see. Because some people, they do it almost immediately because they don't like how it feels. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's really weird. Like, sometimes just around the hallways here, mm -hmm. like, I just, I don't, I guess, like, I don't know why anyone would want to say hi to me. So I just don't look at them. And, and oh, I'm Heather. just like, I just look down and like, hey. You know, I don't like look at them, but what's most like, I don't mind looking like you guys in the eye or like people right. that I'm having a conversation with. And I've been actually in meetings and things like that, mm -hmm. trying to get better at not looking down at what I'm talking about and looking up and actually like addressing um, mm -hmm. the people in the room. But like when I was dating or like when you're in that, like falling in love and, mm -hmm. and romantic kind of state, like right. if like a guy that I like that likes me was ever like looking at me right in the eye I felt like that like I had to turn away like it was too much yeah, yeah I don't I don't want them to like see me because like what are you doing? I don't know it's just like too much it's intense or it's you'll too probably intense. see me for who I really am which is horrible <laughs> like professionally I'm an eye contact person in meetings and things like that it's, mm -hmm. it's important to be I think yeah. but socially there are only two usually two uh, situations in which I will look at you in the eye. It's when I shake your hand mm -hmm. and also when uh, I'm part of a toast. Really? Uh, I know in Germany they do that. Whenever you toast, and some other European countries too, they usually do it, but when you clink glasses together and before you drink it, mm -hmm. you clink the glasses and look the people in the eye. Really? And do okay. That. Yeah. You clink, huh. clink, look each other in the eye. If you don't look at them in their eye, it's kind of a... They think that you're shady. Yeah, really? it's just a little disrespectful if you mm. don't look right at them when you're, no. when you're toasting. Wow, that's kind of good to know. When I was younger, I had a staring problem. So I would just stare at people without I don't really realizing I was doing it. So after a while, because they brought it to my attention, now I usually try not to do that in public situations. I think you're just an observer by nature. Yeah. So I think that's not... You know, there's nothing like wrong but with it you. Can, but when, because I grew up in New York City, so when you have a staring problem, it can cause a problem. You looking at me? Exactly. You looking at me? Exactly. And you may not actually be looking at them in any kind of way. You just are looking in their direction or you're staring it's like, in their hey, own direction. What are you staring at? Right. So now usually my instinct is to look down immediately. But that could also be a problem because, like, my mom always instilled in me, keep your head high and right. your eyes high because it shows confidence. Right. That's true. But it's also comfortable for me to look down when I'm, like, walking about. I've now, I don't, I'm going to have to pay attention to the next time I shake someone's hand, though, to see if I'm looking at them because I tend to be looking at the hand. Me Isn't too. that too weird? Yeah, you don't want to so, miss the hand. You don't want to miss right. the hand. <laughs> because you're staring at them. <laughs> you're looking at them in the eye. You're just like, oh, snap. Hitting their boob. Pretend that didn't happen. Yeah. <laughs> it's like you go, oh. It's like slow motion, like, Wait, oh. Where do you look when, like, let's say it was like an oral presentation or you're hosting? Where do you look when there's a crowd of people and you're standing alone? Um, I try to 
Do you ever look, look at, at multiple, multi, like different people every you, time I look up? Yeah. Do you ever have keep looking at the same people? Well, if if they if they seem to be responding, right? Then, then yes. Um, if they're attractive. Yeah. If I'm really zoned into what I'm saying and I'm I'm confident what I'm saying and mm -hmm. I'm not looking down at bullet points or something, I will look for that one person that's like texting or like not paying attention to uh -huh. me and like keep talking to them until Ooh, they look up that's a really you know good like idea. i see you don't think i see you but i see you right because i've been in the crowd and i've never wanted to be the person to stare at another person to use them as that focal and i point. try to do that just because i speak and i'm like i know how hard it is to get like an individual's attention in a crowd right. so i try to be the one that pays no, I'm Attention. the person that I know how uncomfortable it feels to be that person's focal point. Yeah. So I always try to look at different people, uh -huh. but you need to also feel comfortable. So yeah. it's like a weird situation when that happens. Yeah, it's also a cultural thing. I travel to Iceland eh, frequently, and I found out, and I didn't know this the first time I went there, that when you pass somebody on the street, you are to look at them in the eye when you're passing them. And the first time I was in Iceland, I was like, why are people staring at me? Am mm -hmm. I obviously that much of a tourist? But, <laughs> right. But, See, it would totally give me a complex. You You're right. Yeah, but yeah. it's customary for when you pass somebody on the street, you look at them in the eye. It's sort of uh, to give respect to them, to okay. to let them know. Acknowledge their that presence. There. Like, yeah. Yeah. That's so strange to me. And I always look down. And if you don't do that then it's either a sign of disrespect or they right. think you might be up to something because you don't look at them in the See, eye when you pass them. I, that, I would I think, get in trouble. But I think we could all stand to, like, do that, to recognize each other a little more. Like, what the, what's wrong with, like, passing... You know, you're walking down the street and you see somebody that you don't know and they're they're walking towards you. Is the, uh, Most people just walk by each other. Is there anything wrong with just, like, being like, hey, how are you? Or... or you know what I you know, usually how you do? Doing? Like, hello, have it. I'm trying to, I've done that. Because Good morning. You make accidental like, eye contact you know? and you give them like a nice little, like half smile. Like, hey. Not really. Like a hey. Hey. I but look, you don't know them. But. I look up too late. I, I think people look at me about <laughs> 20 to 15 feet away and I'm still looking down and I don't look at somebody until they're about 10 to 5 feet away from me. Mm -hmm. And so they're looking at me. I'm still looking down. So now they're like, oh, who's this guy? Then I look up and they're not looking at me anymore. And I'm like, oh, who's this uh, guy? Oh, you missed, you missed it. Missed connections. See, but I would love to be that happy person that just goes around and says, hey to everybody. Because it is it is a good way. You get to meet people, talk to people, be friendly. It's not even that. I mean, what, I mean, what is it, what is it harm to say? But you'll also look crazy. Hey. Oh. <laughs> or sometimes I'll Scary do that me. and I'll get no response. You ever get right. somebody with yes. no response? Yes. Yes. They just what look is at that? you. They look at you. I'm sorry for being friendly. Um, I I like if I'm in a in a convenience store or mm -hmm. the grocery store and I'm I'm being you know making a point to be you know friendly and right. polite and you know not not totally engaging where you get into a conversation with the person, but like just to, to acknowledging they're human. Yeah. <laughs> But then they don't reciprocate. Yep. I'm like, uh, okay, cool. It happens then, to me at the dollar store a lot. Oh my god. And I've done the thing where nobody I, wants to I talk to me at the dollar somebody store. Somebody was talking to me when they said hi. I hate that. I turn around and I said hi. I hate that. And then somebody behind me says hi, and then they start talking. Oh my god. The wave. Oh <laughs> no, my god. or like this woman had I didn't see because her hair was fixed over it. Like she had her Bluetooth in. I went to the <laughs> salon to get my brows done the other night, and she's talking and and she's talking about the you know the it's also like an and uh, a skin center so okay. there's a dermatologist there and a dollar she, store and a skin center oh no not the talk dollar store bargain. this is a different this is a different place the oh, people okay. at the dollar okay. store won't talk to me this woman i thought was talking to me but she had her bluetooth in she wasn't talking to me at all so i started talking i mean i was i wound up talking to myself and then she couldn't even hear me thank god she couldn't hear me because she was like wrapped up in her bluetooth conversation but i couldn't see the bluetooth because her hair was around it have you ever tried to play it off I did the other. Like, what's I the just best way like... you could play that off? Because usually I just kind of start laughing, which is even weirder because you're by yourself. I look down at my phone. I just that this thing, the phone saves all. Saves so many saves lives. All. <laughs> my dad gets into the habit that what he does now is he just responds sarcastically, and I notice I've picked up that same habit. So let's say I'm at a store and I say, "Hey, how you doing?" and they don't respond. I'm like, "Okay, cool." <laughs> <laughs> I actually was in a bad mood and I told the person if you can see me i can see you no you did not they just stared at me <gasps> and they sort of cracked a bit of a smile i freaking love that love that, is so that. Uncomfortable. 
<laughs> no, 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 no. Man. All right. Well, speaking of like <laughs> eye contact and where your eyes go sometimes, do you ever, and be honest, it won't be a secret anymore, but do you Make secretly fun? judge people at the grocery store based on what they have in their cart or their <gasps> basket? I didn't, but someone judged me, and it happened in the Acme and Ventnor. So I go in, and I eat, I eat really healthy when I'm home by myself. If I'm around other people, all of a sudden, I just don't eat good at all. So I picked up like kale, I picked up spinach, vegetables, chicken, just everything healthy. The woman behind me goes, well, that is the healthiest card I've ever seen. And I just felt so like, <laughs> but that's can a you nice not thing. right now? But like, <laughs> okay, so. Yeah, but it's just like dork. Look at her eating so healthy. Like she had egos and she had juice and I just had veggies and chicken and rice. Like, is it only human nature that if you see someone who's a bit overweight, Mm -hmm. That you your eyes always go to to what's in their cart. Oh, yeah. Consequently, like there was this like mother and she had her three kids and she looked like you know just regular mom like in shape or mm -hmm. you know whatever pushing around the cart. But I'm looking at all of the sugar and the sweets and like she's got these three kids, two of which are already running around the store like crazy people. So you know she's got like the high C juicy squeeze right. packs and you know there's there's like four bags of swedish fish in the cart and you know uh captain crunch and i'm like um did you whisper to her don't you think they're hyper enough i whispered to myself <laughs> like oh you have fun with that tonight like man no so, that is a lot of sugar what about you Mike? is it is it wrong when i i'm looking at somebody's shopping cart and i see everything that they have in their shopping cart and then i see something i want in there is it wrong for me to take it out of their shopping cart and keep going <laughs> Have you done that? <laughs> she didn't I buy think that's it yet. Totally wrong. Why? We're still in the grocery store and she hasn't bought it that's yet. That's like stealing someone's cart while they're shopping. Well, I've seen chances people are, do that. Yeah, I don't they're want. Like, There's nothing in it, but it's still mine. What are you doing? So funny. Still in the store. Store he just, property. Ooh. He just wanders around Shoprite, like looking for the the, the right. cart that best matches his grocery list, the and then aisle. just like takes the whole cart. Person it, did it for him already. That happened to wife Karen one oh. time where she was pushing the cart. She stopped. She was looking at something. And she turned around, and this lady took I, f I forget what it was, was she but an old took lady? it out of. Not not that old. Oh. Uh, took it out of wife Karen's thing and put yeah. it in her hand carrier basket and went off walking. I, uh, Karen didn't even... I said, well, what would you say to her? And she says, I didn't know what... I couldn't say anything. I was shocked. She didn't say anything. Yeah, I would I know, say something. I'm like, hey, you know you just took that from my cart. I would have run after her and tackled her. Okay, that's that's too much. <laughs> <laughs> She's probably not even out the store yet. <laughs> so, so you're not supposed to do that? No. Take grocery store items out of other people's cards. No, like that's not cool. That's one. not shopper friendly. What are you doing? Yeah, that's that's like goes against the yeah. unspoken rules of sh really shopping what if you anywhere. Don't walk all the way down to aisle nine. Just get it right. It's right here. What yeah, but maybe do? that other person doesn't want to walk all the way back to aisle nine either. You're to not now see him again. So what difference does it make? <laughs> you might. <laughs> what do you do when you're clothes shopping? Uh -huh. You find a size. Uh huh. But then you decide, nah, I don't want it anymore. So you put it down, you walk away, someone else picks it up, and then you decide, kind of want it again. I know. But that was the last side. That's the last side! Why do we do that? Why do we get so possessive? What do you do, though? Sometimes I will take it, and right. I will hide it behind something that doesn't match at all. <laughs> and I'll be so like, I'm wrong. coming back for that. And then I never go back for it. But no, I have done that all the time, where I've seen, where I've like eh, been on the fence about something, and then I put it back, and somebody walks, saw me looking at right. it. Right. And goes over and picks right. it up and then walks away with it. I was like, but no, that's my size. And you just what put it doing? down for a second. It's not like you put it down and this happened 45 minutes later. No, it happened the minute you put it down. Well, oh if you have God. severed contact with that item, <gasps> if you're no I know, longer touching it. I know, it, yeah. Can you imagine that on Black Friday? Oh, it's happened. I've fought over a cashmere sweater before. I have. Have you really? I oh, yeah. Ever fought oh, over at Macy's. Clothing. It was like, <gasps> it was going to be like. A hundred fifty dollar cashmere sweater. Cashmere. It was on. It's cashmere. Is that a red dot? Is that <laughs> Seinfeld you, reference. There's a red dot on this sweater. Um, it would have been like, I, I think it probably would have come to like thirty five, forty dollars at the end with That's like my coupons deal. and like the Black Friday special. Right. And it was like this, the last color oh. that they had in any of this, like the only size small left in any of the colors that they had. And I was like. 
I'm getting that sweater. And the woman goes to pick it up at the same time as me. And it's like a tug. Uh-huh. Like, and it's just like, she One. wound up saying, I don't like this color anyway. I wound up getting it. But it, it, it was a problem. I bet it was because you exerted dominance and you were obviously going to win that fight. Or you could just start coughing on the person. Or that. They'll let go. I, I had, I literally was like half a second away from kicking her in the shin. Like it was, it was like wow. totally going to happen. I was going to like been a totally. Beautiful stuff. sweater. <laughs> How many times have you worn that sweater? Um, something happened to <gasps> it. Oh my God. What happened to the sweater? So I put it, I have this basket where I corral all of my like scarves and my mm -hmm. gloves and everything. And I, um, somehow like I decided like, well, I have a cashmere scarf. I have this, da 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 da. I didn't store it properly. I didn't put it in a place where it was going to be protected. And I went to take it out to wear it. And there were tiny, tiny little holes all through it. Moths oh, had it, haven't gotten to it. But these tiny little burrow bugs oh. like that I think are just like indigenous to like where I live. Um, and, and right now are I they light brown. Yes. Nope. I had those. Before. I don't know what they are, but they're I don't know ruining they my life. Either. South Jersey light brown burrow bugs. No, so, <laughs> I have. I had them in my parents' house too. I don't know what they're. Oh my be. gosh! So the the I have like a really nice Coach Cashmere sweater that now I store in a um in a Ziploc bag, mm -hmm. and I can't so that nothing can get into it. Cedar needs cedar. Yeah, well, this, cedar. it's it's it didn't seem to work. So before that happened, though, how many times? Like, are we talking five? Oh, I wore it enough. Okay. I definitely wore it enough. Because I've done that where I want something so bad, like these Gwen Stefani Harajuku lover Converse type of sneakers. Mm -hmm. They were covered in fruit, and I asked my mom, I needed those sneakers, and my mom said, you're not going to wear them. And I said, Mom, I'm totally going to wear these, and I'm going to wear them all the time. Wore them twice. Mm -hmm. Wore them twice I in think, the five years I had I it. think you and I are coveters by nature. It's like we see something, we fall in love with it. We have to have it. It's a mission. Right. Um, okay. We know that Mike Steele's out of carts. No, that was somebody else who did that. Somebody else did yeah. that. Not right. Can't yes. prove it. That's okay. the third person. You steal out of carts, maybe. Possibly. He's thought about it. It's um, not stealing but have if they you, haven't bought it But yet. have you looked at somebody's grocery basket and thought, why are they buying that? Uh, well, depending on where we are and if it's like, I don't Mississippi. know. Mississippi. What do you mean, like lube? <laughs> <You're> talking, <laughs> I'll tell you what happened. True story. I have nowhere to go with that, so I'm just going to let you finish. Well, I'm sorry to hear. The uh, <laughs> So where I grew up in Georgia, they sell alcohol in grocery stores. Mm -hmm. And it was late on a Friday night. I'm getting some groceries. And right behind me, there is a really redneck couple. I mean, mm -hmm. that's the w only way to describe them. And they were all over each other, you know, hands mm -hmm. in the back pocket. And, yeah. and I look over as I'm the person's that. checking me out. And I'm noticing what they have on the conveyor belt right behind me. <laughs> a six pack of beer and a box of condoms. All right. We know their plans. So to answer your question, <laughs> yeah, I kind of... Uh, <laughs> I kind of made up a story, I guess. Weren't you happy, though, that they're using protection? Well, and I was going home alone to eat uh, a Stouffer's pizza by myself. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wasn't happy. <laughs> Why do they get love and I don't? That is so funny. All right, oh, Mike, man. what's on your mind this week? All right, ethics question. Oh, no. My don't favorite. Answer, don't answer like don't you're supposed to. Don't answer like you're supposed to. Nobody's listening to this anyway. If you were walking too quickly on an icy sidewalk in front of a neighbor's house, you slip, hurt yourself really bad. Would you like would you be likely to sue your neighbor if you were confident that you would win the lawsuit because he didn't shovel the snow? Obvious that he didn't take care of the sidewalk in front of his house. It's your neighbor. You hurt yourself pretty badly. And if you were confident, say you took it to a lawyer or you confided in somebody who, said, Dude, who knew legally you could totally win this case. If you knew that you could win the case, would you sue? So badly as in I probably broke something? Yeah, or, I'd okay. say like a break. So it's not like I just slipped and fell and I was like, oh, no, my bottom. Like I actually yeah, yeah. really hurt myself. Yeah, you got to okay. really hurt yourself. Uh, you know, like a break or maybe a concussion. And we're talking like about like the sidewalk in front of their house. Right. Like it's not even their property. Yours. It's just regular walkway where anybody can walk through. But the, it's in front of their house. Right. They're responsible for clearing that. Would you oh. 
uh, sue that person. Pardon the pun. This is a slippery slope. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, I know, you know, as homeowners, we're we're charged with the responsibility of maintaining right. our, our property, and that does include um, the sidewalk in front of our house. However, if, like, let's say a piece of that sidewalk were broken up or something uneven yeah like yeah. it wouldn't be our responsibility to take care of that that would be the township correct oh was i supposed to not fix my own sidewalk whoops mm. uh, maybe <laughs> some people do but Is i are homeowner like, things i don't know i don't you know if you're like a renter mm -hmm. and that happens like at the bottom of would your it be stoop, my landlord? like i have no idea but if 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 i had already gone through the hoops and a lawyer is telling me you can win this case. You had to go to a doctor. Had to go Their to a doctor. Their bills are piling up, Heather. Mm. I bet you I still would not sue. For me, it depends on my history with this neighbor. So if this neighbor is a problematic neighbor, okay. and this happens all the time, and I just, like, that was, like, the final straw, yeah, I think I might. What if you are just somewhere walking? And you have no knowledge of this person. You just happen to w be walking down a street uh -huh. and you fall in front of their house. I probably would. No prior. I mean, I would think. Like, it, just if I had a negative history. I, I don't want to be that person that sues because I don't like those people. People are li so litigious. Right. I don't like I that. would probably chalk it up to a weather event. You know, okay. and saying, okay, this is like an act of nature. She's thinking of this as she's laying on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> bleeding. This is just a weather event. Uh, it was the weather's <laughs> fault. Yeah. Even though everyone else is shoveled and clean, that's fine. Yeah, I yeah. mean, especially if I was walking quickly and I, I wasn't paying attention to what I was doing. Like, Don't I know what I'm getting yourself? myself into. <laughs> I always blame myself. No, because what if, what if you were doing, just walking like a normal person and that happened? someone else's negligence cause you suffering and pain i mean once again the history of it like what if we are really good neighbors and they feel so bad so they offer to help me pay i'm like oh like okay thanks. well here's the but thing spring if if you and i were like driving somewhere mm -hmm. and you were following me or whatever and and whatever you happen to like not break in time and you tap my back bumper mm. i'm more likely to like be like oh spring it's fine like we'll right. work it out then if it were some stranger that just bumped in my car I, oh my god i would be like what are you doing were you on your phone like why aren't you paying attention mm -hmm. i think we are all naturally like programmed to have a little bit more empathy for somebody that we know in situations like that right. <laughs> especially if you live right next door to them correct whether you like them or not can you, you know imagine, though, if you sue your neighbor and then you have to <sighs> continue to live right next door to oh them? i would be I just know. fine i'm but the person that i <laughs> never see my neighbors i'm uh, telling you if i don't like this neighbor and this is something all the time i'm pretty lenient with most things but if this is a repeated thing that it's always been a problem and now i got hurt because of your negligence Oh, yeah. You'd have to wear that boot again, Spring. <laughs> Maybe, Maybe full body cast. Maybe. We don't know. Imagine trying to get around in a full body cast. Right. Like, if it's like my neighbor, Vicky, just pulled that name off the top of my head. Her and I are always cool, and she always shovels, but this one time it just happened, I just, I, I would feel sympathetic. I'd be like, all right, okay, it's fine. Don't worry about it. It's okay. But if this is Charlie, I don't know why I picked Charlie. And no, he Charlie's does this like, all the time. Charlie's he's drunk all the time. Right, like, yeah, come on, never, Charlie. I have anything. told you about this, and now look what happened. Look what you made like happen to me. I think if we're boiling boiling this down to a yes or a no, I I'm gonna be on the no side. No, I would not you would sue. Not sue. No, I would probably just put... talk it up to weather, and it's, it was an accident, and that's that. God meant it to happen to Heather. No. That's what she's saying. No. <laughs> No. Spring, what would you do? Spring's going to see you in court. <laughs> and she's going to go. Unlike Nationwide, God was not asking, on my side that day. Asking the lawyer, what's the maximum amount? Of, is it 50000 Okay. I want it all. I would not sue. You know, I talk why? about This is the Sue S.A. Mm -hmm. and this, see, that's why I didn't oh, want to do it. And yeah. there are good. so many people who don't take responsibility for their own actions. Mm -hmm. Sure, it was supposed to be that person's responsibility for mm -hmm. clearing the sidewalk. But... My action, I should have been more careful. I, stuff happens. You slip and fall. Yeah. And yeah, sure, I got really hurt. Should have been paying more attention, I guess. Now, if I was walking outside someone's business, let's say I'm outside of a drugstore or something, mm -hmm. and they have not manicured their uh, property after a snowstorm or mm -hmm. for whatever reason, it would be the same if, you know, 
it, it's the same reason that when we go to events and we pull out the extension cord, we tape right. down extension cords because, case. you know, if somebody trips over that, the business is at fault. We become at fault for that. Um, so if I were to slip and fall at a business whose whose job it is to, you know, take care or maintain things like that, mm -hmm. my, my I bet you I would think differently. I had an instance, it was a snowy parking lot, and you know those things that you pull up to and the cement things to keep yeah. it from rolling to? Yep. Uh, they had plowed the parking lot. The snow plow snagged one of them and pulled the rebar up. Yeah. Well, I pulled into that parking spot. I didn't know it. I pulled too far oh. forward, and it hung underneath my bumper. So when I backed up, it pulled the whole front of my car oh, off. Oh, my I'm gosh. Like, so uh, I didn't know what to do. Right. And so I called the police, filed a report, Yeah. got in contact with the landlord of the parking lot and the shopping mm -hmm. center, and uh, he was cool with it. I said, look, I've, I've, I've never done this before, but I mean, I've got to be honest, your parking lot, the rebar was sticking up. Yeah. You yeah. might want to talk to your snowplow contractor guy. Yeah. Because he, he really messed up your property. Now my property right, messed up. Right. Right. Oh, that's and, tricky. Uh, he took care of it. He was fine with it. He said he's insured for it. Uh, and it all See, turned out okay. Right. But, we're right. That's fine. Um, I, but I felt bad even doing that. Because again, you know, maybe I should have paid attention about how far up I was pulling but no see for me i'm lenient with most things but if it's all the time it's just i guess because my temper <laughs> because at my old job my one of my responsibilities was i was in charge of birthday parties and part of the birthday parties you had to cut the cake <laughs> let's put the temperamental person in charge of birthday I, parties <laughs> I was, the temperamental person was in charge of birthday parties Come children on, activities turn. swimming whatever but I was keeping the parents and the had, kids in check. We had birthday party coordinators, so I was in charge of them basically. And their job was to make sure that they had everything they needed. So what happened was each and every single time we had a birthday party, they would lose the birthday cake knife. Uh -huh. I don't know why, but they always lost it. Yeah. So I had enough. And I told them It's like OJ Simpson. You <laughs> can't find <laughs> it's it. <not> funny. <laughs> they, I made a sign in and sign out sheet and I told them the next time you lose this knife. I'm going to put a tiny little cut on your finger. And they said, oh, that's it? I'm like, no, no, no. Every single time you lose this knife, I'm going to put a cut. Like, I'm going to cut your finger in the same spot so I cut you So what you told before. the children? No, the birthday party oh. coordinators. <laughs> Could you imagine? We've been I'll sued in a heartbeat the with that. Or whatever. Oh, so yeah, like for it's me, it's just, it's just a temper problem. Like, if I tell you once, okay. If I tell you two, twice, fine. If I have to constantly tell you about it and I had enough, that's when that happens. I think we can see what life with spring as a <laughs> parent's going to be like. Physically mutilate you. I've become my parents. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah. So, yes, I would sue if this is a repeated problem with Charlie. Otherwise, Charlie. okay, fine. I'll I know. Understand. I know. It's like Charlie has taken. I have a face and a, and, and a body <laughs> and a lifestyle for Charlie. This is great. I figure Charlie's a good name because I don't actually know what Charlie is. What's going right, on in right, your yeah. life, Spring? Ah. Uh, so, I see that you brought out a really nice shirt that you said you've had for a while now, and it looks like it would definitely be a piece at Zara. So, she said that she was going to give it away, but you gave it another chance, right? So, I was, I had gone shopping recently, and I decided when I come home with those uh -huh. bags, I'm being, like, ruthless yes. about clothes on my rack, okay. um, folded folded tank top t-shirts, things that uh -huh. I, I just don't wear anymore, and not a second thought about it. They just go right in the bag. Okay, do for the donation. Same thing. Right. So I'm flipping through, flip, flipping through, and I came across this um, kind of tartan plaid, totally ruffle cute. front shirt that was inspired by like Miley Cyrus before she even met Liam Hemsworth, like before no she way. was swinging on a wrecking ball. Uh -huh. This was a Miley Cyrus inspired shirt. I have the so, same shirt, by the way. Love it. I kind of want to wear it with and he like. And he looks so much better in it than I do. I want to wear it with I'll like start. black high waisted pants. Like it looks so yeah, cute. I think I've done that today. I'm like keeping it casual yeah i was trying to wear it with leggings because mm -hmm. it comes down like hangs down low but not low enough so i went with the jeans instead mm -hmm. but um i was like oh my gosh I, like i think i've worn that shirt twice uh -huh. it was a christmas gift so i know i wanted it like why like why am why i not wearing this been? so i i did fold it up it went into the bag for donation and then <laughs> as i'm walking back and forth past the bag i'm like Ugh. so i take the shirt out and i hang it back up and I said, I'm going to try to wear it before the end of, of winter. Okay. Last night, I had a dream that I was wearing it. So I woke up this morning and I said, let me see. And I put it on. It doesn't it look so good. bad. 
But I do this all the time. Same. Like, I have a pair of jeans, mm -hmm. seven jeans that are size 24. Okay. That I'm going to get back into, even if it's on my deathbed when I'm 80 Look, pounds. It's amazing. They're if incentive jeans. My thighs like, I will never give them away. Never, <laughs> never. Like, it's going to happen someday. But uh -huh. I'll do that. I'll go back and forth and be like, well, maybe I'll wear that again. Then I'll wear it. This happens to you too, right? All you wear time. it, and then it, you're like, Ugh, "Why? Why did I do this?" See, so I have. <laughs> this is Heather's shirt is the boyfriend equivalent yes. of, or is the wardrobe equivalent of seeing the boyfriend, the ex boyfriend across the room at the coffee house. Yeah. Right, and you're like, "Oh, let me give him another chance," and then you yeah. go on a date, and you're like, "Oh, that's why." Then you wake oh, up. Oh yeah, <laughs> I broke up with you for yeah. a reason. You wake like, up the hello? next morning. Why so, did I do that? I have a pair of green American Eagle high waisted jeans. Me too. Jeggings. Actually, you do have a pair of pants that are similar to this to these pants, but that's not the point. So the color is really nice. They fit okay. For whatever reason, whenever I wear them, I hate them. I don't dislike them. I hate these. You're pants. uncomfortable in them, right? I just feel ugly. It doesn't flatter my shape. But, but everyone always gives me compliments on it. But I'm always about how it makes me feel. Uh -huh. So there was one time I wore it in Philadelphia. And I have them, and I felt cute when I left the house, and I'm walking around. I looked at my friend, and I said, why did you let me wear these pants? You know I hate these pants. <laughs> <laughs> that was her fault. So I always put it in the giveaway bin. Yeah. But then I pass by, same way you did, try it on, and I'm like, oh, they look nice at home. I leave my house, pure hatred. I have been going through this back and forth with these American Eagle jeans for the last three years. And I still make the same mistake. Give you know what me. they are? Give them to me. They need to be out of your house. <laughs> yeah. Give them to me. No, Hand he's right. Over. Because that's what you have to do. You have to give them to somebody. You have give to me the pants. where they're not accessible to you anymore. The pants and I will go on a long walk and only one of us will come back. You know what it is? I think, <laughs> I think it's because I wear so many black jeans and black leggings that I see the green and I'm like, maybe, maybe I should. Today. Yeah. Maybe I should switch it up. Maybe and you should I switch do it up. And it's a huge mistake. And I get angry all over again. Like it <laughs> makes me so visibly angry that you'll ask me what's wrong and I don't want to say it because I'm going to say it. it's because I'm wearing these jeans. <laughs> <laughs> we just, I guess, have like difficulty parting with things or something. Know. I don't know what and, it is. And it's just that what if moment. Like, oh, it's like, what if tomorrow I'm thinking about wearing an outfit and I needed those jeans for this outfit? But that's like, the thing. You visualize it and those so you can't get rid of it. not look good with anything. Like, why do I keep them? I donate a lot of clothes because I have this thing. If I haven't worn it in six months, oh, then I do donate. Do you really stick to that? Yeah, I, I try that's to. That's a yeah, good rule to have. Um, I don't do that. Yeah, because it'll. I, I never wear out clothes. I, and it's just if I don't get rid of them. Oh. Uh, I'll never refresh the wardrobe, and, yeah. and the closet will be too crowded. Oh my gosh! I just six months rule. If you don't wear it, or haven't even thought about it in six months. You know, you pull it out of the back of the closet. Oh yeah, I kind of forgot about. It. Boom, gone. Who knew that Mike had fashion tips that no, I needed? No, I no, I know. I I would bet that he would be somebody who act, doesn't mind purging, right. doesn't mind no. letting oh, go of things. So I have things that it does I'm just feel like, good though. I have things from high school that I know I'm not going to wear again, but just because I've had it from high school. Here, give it to me. I don't, want, to me. I don't no, want no, no. To do it. <laughs> Maybe this is a topic for next week. So just think on this. What is the oldest thing in your wardrobe that you that you just can't? get rid of what is the the oldest thing that you own in your <laughs> wardrobe and i've got three things maybe i'll bring I them in too. i'll take some pictures we'll do show and tell does anybody else have anything no i'm hungry i'm good we'll adjourn for now we want to know do you judge anyone else by what you see in their grocery cart or basket and if you head, say no you're lying head to sojo1049.com yeah. take part in our poll thanks for checking out the around the mic podcast if you like it tell a friend about it please give us um go in and, and give us a nice rating we appreciate you listening to this extra bit of bonus content you can find mike richmond and social spring gonzalez mornings on sojo 1049 from 5 30 to 10 i'm heather deluca and we will talk to you next time on around the mic hey wait bye bye, bye, -bye. There, they go. Bye -bye. there they go Bye-bye.